Hey guys, Blazer here, and I just got done with a Land Before Time series. And boy, do I have a lot to talk about, because this show was at times great, and at other times, not so great. It had some huge flaws, and I do mean huge. But there are times I was enjoying myself. In short, it's kind of a mess. But a bad mess? Well, let's get into this review. <laughs> So this series was aired in 2007 and went for one season of 26 episodes, but going by that ending, they wanted to do more because there is no ending. Now I have already reviewed the first episode, so go check out that review, link in description if I remember. <laughs> but in short, there's a sharp tooth called Wedclaw and his fast by the minions Screech and Fun, whose names they like randomly say it in a later episode, and are basically just big bullies out in the mysterious beyond, terrorising a place and scary everyone. So Chopper is living in the valley now along with Ruby, who is there to look after Chopper. It was kind of confusing at first, as it seemed like they're there to be safe from Wedclaw, but no, it's more so Chopper is there to learn how the dinosaurs of the Great Valley live amongst each other as friends, and such so that he can go out and obscure us beyond and teach others. I honestly really like that idea, because yeah, he can talk to both, and we do see him talking in Sharp 2 sometimes, and it's honestly great when that happens, he's just so cute hearing him try to war talk. <laughs> but, um... Here's the thing, in one of the episodes, an Earthshake happens splitting up the group, which goddamn, I wish I made a counter for this because Earthshake happens so much in the show to further the story or to make a story. It's kind of weak storytelling using the same thing over and over. But yeah, anyway, so Ducky and Chopper get split up from the group and they're trapped high up on the walking formation with nowhere to go. And one of the fast buyers is there with them, but his tail was trapped so he is un unable to get them. So they're stuck there together. So like Chopper and him talk here and there, but here's the thing. We get subtitles for both of them, showing that meat eaters are just unintelligent dinosaurs wanting on basic instincts. Yes, he talks about Ducky like she is food, also saying like herbivores and sharp tooth can't be friends, but like, they're having a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and it really just throws this whole idea that meteors are simpletons out of a window then with how Chopper is for like, for one, but with them, um, like, yeah, communicating like they are, so why don't they just all just, you know, communicate with each other? Like, other sharp teeth, I mean, and get Wedclaw and his minions out of there. But also scared of him and understand he is a threat, yet you don't do anything because they're not intelligent enough. Yet, showed here, they are. It just raises questions. Right as well, that's the only time it happens. But other episodes had opportunities to do so, like one of the sadder episodes, but also a really interesting one, where they talk about like the time of the Great Giving, the third movie, where they learn all about sharing and making sure everyone has food and water and not to be selfish. I absolutely love that they mention this movie. They now celebrate it every year, which I have mentioned this before, but this like makes it really hard to tell exactly how old the kids are since even Tria acts like she's done it before, meaning she's already been here for like a year or so. Anyway, so she being quite mean, it was like, oh, this damn shark teeth are so horrible, my trumpet is right there. So he lowers his head as well like, yeah, I guess they can be. And then she is all like, oh yes, they're horrible creatures. Which of course makes him upset, and it, it's kind of sad. It's a sad episode like that. So he ends up going to Mysterious Beyond to try to make friends with some of the sharp teeth to show that they can be friends. And he does have a cute interaction with a young, younger dino, but he talks like a herbivore, not in wars? Like, why? Oops, that's okay. You're just learning. <laughs> Easy there. We bite our food, not our friends. So there's just no, like, no subtitles here. You think that's what they were doing. Instead, the poor dino is just confused. And this episode did come later. So it is just, it's a bit confusing. 
So that is a problem that they only did it in one episode. But alright, what other problems does this show have? Well, I mentioned that they had two songs in the first episode, and did wonder if they would do that in every episode, and yep, they did. Now, the songs are short at least, but goddamn, they are some of the laziest written songs I've ever heard. Because most of the songs follow the same beat, or just stop beats from the previous movies, like Big Big Water from the Fist movie. Yeah, they used that song multiple times, but just changed the lyrics to suit the situation. Big, big, long neck test. The very big, big, long neck test. Don't be, don't be scared. Don't be, don't be scared. Or like Going Adventuring Song from the Tenth Movie. It's used seven times. Seven. I got sick of the music. Like there was one that had a really cool beat and I really liked whenever they used it. But yeah, they used it over and over again and just changed the lyrics and it felt incredibly lazy. At least the Lion God with the song and episode, they, ha they had good songs that I still listen to even today. Though some were lazy, they did try and all sounded different. So that is something I just hated about this series. The songs are lazy with no heart or thought put into them. Some things I hated were they, they seemed to forget things, like Peachy being absolutely scared of Fiery Mountain, aka the, the volcano, even though they had been there in the movies before. Couple episodes where basically anything is a tree sweet. If it's a fruit, basically, it's a treat sweet. Is it like a tree seat, a very specific flower? Also, Trisha is here. I, w I was wondering if she would turn up or not, but like, she's only in like two, maybe three episodes, which I feel like, yeah, they had no idea what to do with her. <laughs> Peachy has a few siblings, but one episode they focus on his family, there was only three of them. I mean, they're in a world dino, so probably eaten, but I feel like they shortened it to fit the narrative. Which was cute as they were afraid of being eaten by Chopper the entire episode to rescue his mom at one point. But I do feel like, yeah, they shorted the family just so that they could all fit them in on one screen and fit the narrative and all that. Yeah, I just feel like they changed things to fit into the idea of the episode or just straight up forgot. There's also a good couple of mistakes like the colours being wrong on Spike happens a lot and just stuff like that I'll show you now. There's also some really boring episodes, and that especially goes into the last few episodes, which the series should have been like 20 episodes, not 26. I feel like it dragged itself on with some really weak episodes. Hell, the second episode was bad enough for Tria having a thing for collecting shiny rocks, which she never does again, mind you, and Sarah loses one and they go and find another. That's the episode. There's one that has Mo back in it, which is really cool, I will get into that later. But the whole episode, basically a wither gets blocked up, so they follow it and see all these rocks that are blocked away and let the ocean fill up part of the valley, allowing Mo to enter. But then they can't remove the rocks too quickly, or else Mo and his family will be trapped in the valley. So it's all about moving rocks slowly and talking, Chopper falls in at one point, but that's it. That's the episode. It was completely pointless having Mo there. He he was not needed. He didn't do anything. He did kind of save Chopper, but then everyone kind of pitched in to save him. So it was really pointless. It was a pointless, horrible episode, I have to say. But this review isn't all negative. Let me talk about the good, and that is returning characters like Mo. There's quite a few of them, and those are generally good episodes besides Mo. Greedo comes back, though he's still scared of flying. Basically, him and Petrie end up getting caught when end up flying all the way to the mysterious beyond, end up in a cave, meet an old blind flyer who was kind of funny. It was a nice episode. Ali returns in a great episode. She has a new friend, another long neck, who is so up himself telling stories of beating up sharp teeth. Which they don't believe, so they trick him by making it look like Chopper is chasing him, and he of course like runs away scared, only to get his whole herd of long necks to chase him down. Which was quite intense of how much they just wanted to kill Chopper. It was kind of great seeing a whole long neck herd running around like that. At the same time, poor Chopper. <laughs> Mr. 
Big Nose, one of the most hated characters to me from the Big Freeze, he appears. But he's got a new voice and is actually really likeable in the show. I really liked him. He appears quite a lot telling his children all these stories. Or if like they hear about like a new thing, they go and tell him. Because he knows everything. So he, he could tell them, you know, oh like yeah, that's this and that. This means this and that. And I, I, I really enjoyed him. His character actually had like a really good purpose being there. Because he is the wise one, basically. He knows everything. And so, yeah, that's kind of his character. But he was also kind of sassy-ish. And I, I liked it. Like, him and Topsy seemed to fight quite a lot. And I actually really enjoyed that little uh, duo. Tippy as well, the little spike tail shows up. Hit the bully and his two friends from the third movie on the final episode. Which, again, isn't much of an episode. Like, it's just very much a regular episode. No red claw or anything. So, in other words, there's no conclusion to the story. And even in the next movie, he's nowhere in it. So there's no conclusion, which is a massive problem I have. Also, his dad and Shorty show up in another great episode. Which I do love seeing little for his dad. It's just so wholesome. And you know what? There are some wholesome episodes and general good episodes, though there are just some real boring ones too. Hell, even Doc, aka the lone dinosaur, makes an appearance. And that, and that was like the start of, oh no, it's gotta start getting bad from here, isn't it? But that's honestly a great episode too. Though you see, I don't quite hate this show, it just has some big flaws. But there's some good stuff too. For one, I still love the characters. Chopper is great. I absolutely love Chopper. He really made the show for me. Like, everyone is just so scared that he'll eat them whenever he comes across someone new. And it was funny how he reacts to these things. Ruby wasn't too bad of a character. I didn't mind her too much. She didn't really do a whole lot. She was just a little bit quirky. And I, I, I didn't mind her too much. I feel like she fits in pretty well with him. Uh, something that do does happen is kind of just... What? <laughs> There's an episode where Ducky is like, I wish we could tell what Spike was thinking. And so we get a whole episode seeing through Spike's eyes, basically. Like, not, like, directly through his eyes, you know, but we see it from, like, Spike's perspective. Which, apparently, like, he sees all in purple and can't actually understand the others besides their names. Which I guess kind of explains some things, but also makes it really confusing, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Little foot. But we also hear him talking, like it's all in his head. So not talking to the others, but it's him talking. It's so weird. And then weirder still is that he apparently hears the trees singing. Yeah, I, I think Spike might be crazy. <laughs> <sighs> tree stars, but the tree star's song has changed. There's something new. <laughs> well, the new song's not coming from these tree stars. It's so that's how he's so good at finding food is because he hears them singing, I, but then he eats them. So I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> don't sing around Spike, <laughs> apparently, or he'll eat you. But probably the best thing about the show was some of the faces they did. Check these out. Some great stuff there for sure. But well, speaking about the animation, there's this weird 3D moment that happens a few times in the second episode. But we don't see it again until like one of the final episodes. And even then, it's only done like once. Like, okay, sure. I understand they're doing like, the, like a, a little bit more of a 3D stuff, which I have gotten much, much better at. And it's not used so frequently. It is here and there, but it's definitely a lot better. But yeah, but it, why the characters are in 3D here, but again, it's only in the second episode besides like one more moment in a later later episode Another thing though is that the show is beautiful It is very nice to look at with some amazing backgrounds. Mysterious Beyond doesn't look green 
all the time. <laughs> there is an episode or two where it is green, but for the most part, it looks rather beautiful. Which, like, yeah, I guess is one of the problems. That is that it's a bit all over the place as to how it looks. It's a mess on how big the valley is, lots of times I do go out to the mysterious beyond and there's no like mention of wet claw at all so how bad is it really out there you know? The show can be a bit of a mess but it is a kid show in the end you're not supposed to think too much of it but when you do have this villain you need to show him and they don't really do that enough because yeah like I said there's no ending. In the end though I didn't mind watching it let's be real here it's perfectly Fine. Does it capture what Land Before Time is? No. That's long gone, sadly. But the characters are what we know. Like, even Topsy is back to his old self for the most part. Which I did miss. It's kind of half and half and I like it. Which I will also say here, quite sadly, both Topsy, aka John Ingle, who also does the narration for the movies, and Grandpa Longneck, aka Ken of Mars, passed away and so this was the last Land Before Time thing they did. And they had been doing it since the second movie so it is quite sad. I really do like Grandpa Longneck, he was one of my favourite characters and I did like Topsy towards the end there. You know he's a little annoying for a while but I did like him in the series, he was kind of funny. Cause he's in like those short, cause it's like a 20 minute episode so it's short little bursts of him being moody and then him like uh, regretting why he's died or whatever you know. It, it sort of like comes by really quickly and it's kind of funny like that like I really did like him in it so I am sad that they both passed away and aren't in the next movie then it's it's sad but yeah the characters and everything are what we know in the end it's more so the same stuff we got for the latest movies done on a smaller 20 minute scale it wasn't all that bad just needed to not have so many songs and have more weight claw as this looming threat and be a bit more clear on the narrative of why Chopper is there in the first place we never did see Chopper's parents as well. We saw a flashback of Ruby's parents and what's going on there, but never to Chopper's, so it's just a bit weird. But, in the end, I'm glad I watched it and will give this TV series a 5 out of 10 foxes. It's average in the end, nothing to write about, unless you're doing a review. But, nothing to hate on either. Besides the repeated use of the same songs. <laughs> but, Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Give this video a like and please subscribe to my channel because I'll love you if you do. Hit that bell icon and this fox says, be who you want to be. Alright guys, bye for now. Ow -ow! But this review isn't all negative. It's average in the end. Nothing to write about unless you're doing a review. Review.